Uh, what can I say about our next roast? Ian Alexander is a sad, attention-seeking young man who is desperate and lonely for yours and everyone's approval. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian, I need this Alexander. <laughs> Come on, Ian. Thank you. That was it. That's all you had for me? I love thank you. I love this setup, how close my junk is to Dave's face. This is, this is it. Thank you, everyone. That's why he wanted to sit there, just to be there. All right. The Merriam-Webster's Dictionary defines the term celebrity as follows. As a noun, a person who is celebrated, honored, frequented, and well-known. <laughs> what are we doing here? Is this how you're going on? There's an impotency joke in there somewhere. Seriously, we're at Sarnia's first ever roast. Held by people who think roast means a talent show that doesn't require any talent. That was the show. Glad everyone could come out tonight to your event, Mark. It's great. It's fantastic. It's fine. Dave thought it meant we were all going to feed him meat. But, uh, but yeah, the whole setup of this thing is quite hilarious in itself. It's like one big one-liner, and then it's just done. There's, we all didn't really need to come out and do this. Even the poster for the event and the Facebook event page was like the punchline for the whole thing. It was like, okay, we get it, and why are we stretching this thing out right now? I don't really understand how this works. And the fact that we're all gathered here in this place, we all, the fact that we think that the Sarnia celebrity is a thing that you can be. There's no such thing as a Sarnia celebrity. Really, do you know what well-known means in Sarnia, Ontario? No! <laughs> Publicly intoxicated. <laughs> you have to go to the drunk tank and then have people know about it and then talk about it with other people. That's what it means. You have to have some seriously awful crap happen to you before you're on anyone's radar. You have to go through a terrible divorce. You gotta lose a child in a custody battle. You gotta take a dump in your pants and give a police officer the finger <laughs> before anyone gives a crap about you in this town. You have to go missing. You have to go missing in this town before people know who you are. You have to disappear before you appear in people's lives and get a crappy Sarnia Observer report made up about you that goes virally public on Facebook before anyone knows who you are. And yet we're just masking this with this event and lying to ourselves that any of us, I include myself in this, that we all think that we're Sarnia celebrities, really. And it's all that, like, we are roasting a person who is an online web series host slash karaoke MC slash whatever who doesn't know how to film, host, and edit a web series. <laughs> Our master roaster is a front man without a band and a host frequently without a show. And I don't even know these other pricks. What do you, you guys do? Like, <laughs> like radio hosts who still play Nickelback? Like the old Nickelback? Have you heard radio? Like current radio? It's a radio station that doesn't know how to be a radio station. And I don't even care who you are. And I'm not better. I'm not better, by the way. I'm a comedian who doesn't know how to make people happy. It's just a depressing slope from here on, just to let you know. And we're all gathered in a restaurant that doesn't know how to be a restaurant. Seriously, laugh, laugh this one through, folks, please, or else John's gonna kick me out. It's gonna happen. Gather the phones right there. We are in the restaurant 
whose Facebook like count matches its monthly revenue. <laughs> you're gonna go home and you're gonna check that, and that'll be a lot later. I planted that seed for you. But seriously, we can't go on bashing brownstones too much because they're just gonna kick us out. But seriously, they're trying. I mean, we're all trying here. Everyone on this in this dais here, we're all falsely, hopefully, trying to make cool things happen in Sarnia, and that takes a lot of courage. Brownstones is opening a restaurant in a place like Sarnia, Ontario, where it is poisonously, toxically defined cool at all times. It's hard for people like us to try to make cool things happen. Brownstones is trying. It really, really is. They've had some successes not too long ago. They had the success of the Great Gatsby themed thing. Great Gatsby themed, uh, let's talk about Dave. Or is this going to get awkward now, Mark? <laughs> Should I do the rest of this beside Mark? I'm going to be the rest of this beside Mark. They had the Great Gatsby themes. Did, did anyone go to that? I know I didn't. But I heard it was good. I, know, I heard it was good. I'm saying, I'm saying right now. It was fantastic. That's a success that Brownstones has. And I hear that we're going to have a string of other similarly themed events that are based on other Leonardo DiCaprio films. Uh, they've already done the beach where they dumped all the sand on the parking lot and tricked people into paying to sit on it outside the restaurant. That was great. I'm um, looking forward to the Titanic themed event when this place finally goes under. <laughs> but before it goes under, they're going to have one, more, one last hurrah to try and save the place. It'll be kind of a crossover theme. Uh, Romeo and Juliet meets Gangs of New York meets The Departed. That's where they just murder all their staff and try and retire. <laughs> it'll be good. It'll be like an Inception party, we're gonna party, we're gonna party sort of thing. But my, my favorite is the Django Unchained theme. Uh, and that's every day uh, where any non-white person walks in and immediately feels uncomfortable. <laughs> that was it. That was it. But uh, Mark Tatro works here. The guy that was just like, let's talk about something else. He works here. He put this thing together. Round of applause for Mr. Mark Tatro. Do it. Do it. Mark tries to be a lot of different things. He's worn a lot of different hats over the years and Star Wars helmets. <laughs> He's just stormtrooping on whenever he can. He can't really decide what he wants to be. He was in a bunch of different bands. Uh, he thought he was a filmmaker for a while. He was a recording artist. Now he works here doing whatever it is he does here. He's, this guy is so indecisive. I've worked with Mark before. I've worked with Mark before. I know him. There's Dave. Oh, Trump, yeah. This is how most work, by the way. This is how they work, by the way. You don't just target one person that nobody knows anything about. You, you hit everyone that you can. You guys, you guys know what you're getting into? This man is so indecisive that sometimes he locks his children up in the cabinet he keeps his superhero figurines in when he's unsure about fatherhood. Do you want a microphone, Mark? All right. Is this bombing? I can't even tell. You can't even bomb this in Sarnia properly. You can't even bomb in Sarnia Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. My name is David Burroughs, and this is episode number 100. Woo! Woo! This is the whole episode? This whole thing is the episode? Really? David, when, when did you make 100 episodes of the show? When did this time pass? We're having a roast for a person who has no pre-established audience to even get jokes about him, let alone laugh at them. When did this happen? I think that we all want to be a Sarnia celebrity, and Dave wants it the most. <laughs> he wants it so bad with all these people up here that he just continuously refuses to see that A, he won't be, but B, he can't be. It's just not gonna happen. So what he does is he just, he keeps creating these giant events around himself, like that's how he's gonna climb the ladder. You know what I mean? He's got brownstone books for the next 10 years for stuff like this. Eventually we're gonna have the Davy Awards, where he's the sole nominee for all the categories. Best karaoke MC, best independently produced, scarcely watched online and video series. He's gonna have the Dave Burroughs Lifetime Achievement Award tomorrow. He's gonna have the unveiling of 
the local hero date for a statue in the parking lot. Dude's not even dead yet. Yet. <laughs> but seriously, you're like Mark Tintro. Every time, every couple of years, this guy tries to reassemble one of his 17 past bands whenever someone sits down with him with a beer and they accidentally say something like, Hey, remember Wellby? He, he, stop giving these guys ideas. Seriously. Stop it. You guys, I, I, I can see why you guys came together to make this whole thing happen. You're so similar. You guys throw a goddamn party every time almost nothing in your lives happens. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And we're here for charity. This is a charity event. Homie, this is for children. Look at yourselves, people. This is for children. This is a, an organization designed to help better the youth of our community, and yet we're just bullying somebody. <laughs> what is this giving in on itself? I don't understand. The truth is, the reason I'm bombing so hard right now, and I, I love bombing, I just love it because it just shows how things work here. But uh, I don't really know Dave very well, and um, I had to do some research. I, I had to talk to some colleagues and close friends of Mr. Burroughs, and during my travels, I met a wise old man who claimed to have been there during Dave's first breakthrough performance. When he got on his first stage, and he grabbed a hold of his first microphone, and he introduced himself, and then he sang his heart out. And then when he got off the stage, that wise old man came up to him, and he said, wow, that was amazing. And Dave said, really? You think I'm a good singer? And the wise old man said, oh no, the part where you talked, and then handed the microphone off to the actual performer, and they sang. And thus, a karaoke host was born. <laughs> Dave Rose, thank you for having me on. Thank you. <laughs> you don't like dark comedy, I get it. Well, let's give a big hand for a guy who saw two Louis C.K. Uh, stand-up ones. Uh, you know, better, thank you.